The new Kawasaki Vulcan 1500 Classic, with the biggest V-twin ever to hit the asphalt, you've never felt anything like it. What is up YouTube, and welcome to my first ride and review of the Kawasaki VN 1500 Classic, otherwise known as the Vulcan. The Vulcan has been on the road since 1984, and this particular model is a 1996 one with 130,000 kilometers on the clocks. Technically speaking, the bike is quite basic. The engine is a 50 degree 1500cc V-twin with a single KN36 mil carburetor. It makes around 65 horsepower and has 112 newton meters of torque. It's a shaft drive with a four speed transmission and weighs in at 292 kilos dry, which actually isn't too bad for a cruiser of this type. The suspension is cruiser soft, so it's not happy on rough roads but overall it makes for competent handling and is quite stable at high speeds. Cruisers with their raked out front ends are inherently slow steerers, but once you give a strong message through the bars, they tip in convincingly and hold a nice line through the corners. The seat height is low, 700 mil, but small riders and big riders alike won't have any problems riding it, as long as you've got strong legs to keep its bulk upright when stopped. All right, so what is it like on the highway? Well, there's one cool thing that you can do you can have your feet like this and just chill the fuck out can you see this and this if I wanted to I could just ride like this the whole way and it's like totally stress free so it's great all right so what is it like on the twisties we're about to find out so I've, ri I've been riding it for a day now not done that many miles on it I don't know how many because the, the uh, speedo is broken but I sort of got a, a feeling of the bike now I mean obviously it's a cruiser and it's designed with style and comfort in mind but you know on a road like this it's not terrible obviously it's heavy as hell and you can feel the weight but as soon as you're moving along it doesn't feel um, you know like it's it's too much it doesn't feel like oh my god I, I, if, if something happens I'm gonna drop it at any point it's like gonna bounce off the road it's fairly compliant I mean obviously the suspension is soft as hell and the brakes are literally useless you have to use a lot of rear brake just to just to stop the old girl but you can pick a line and you can commit to a line and it doesn't sort of um, bounce uh, bounce around mid corner or give you any frights and scares or anything like that it's um, relatively relatively user friendly now I never thought I would have said that a 1500 cc V twin would be oh shit that was the pegs down would be the perfect uh, beginner beginner bike but it's not terrible I would say anyone who's only been riding for a short time could easily get on with this bike uh, as, as I showed you before around town it was it's pretty maneuverable and you know on roads like this as long as you remember that you're going to need a lot of rear brake because the front brake is just useless it's a single disc with a, a I think it's a Nissin four pot caliper so it's it's totally not not got enough braking power for the performance and the weight of it so you really do have to jab jab on to the rear brake to come to a stop and two fingers is not really enough on the brake lever either I've, I've been using three fingers the whole time just just to get it to stop so um, yeah it's obviously it's not designed with that in mind you know it's not a performance bike but you could I could happily do a long ass trip on this bike I think you could do a uh, say for example a motorway or a highway to some some famous road and then once you're at the famous road you could uh, have have enough fun to be satisfied now I've been riding today with Andy on his R1 and now Adam's in front of me on his GS6 1000 so totally different bikes but obviously he's not wearing any protective gear today and neither am I so we're not going balls out but on say like a five kilometer stretch of road he's usually waiting for me for about a minute so just to put that into perspective and obviously you can see him just absolutely pulling away from me uh, the actual torque of the engine is is great you know you can just leave this thing in nice i'm think i'm in third gear now and i'm just cruising around absolutely no problem but when a, a big corner does come up and I need to brake, I will have to be 
putting it down a gear as well as using the rear brake and the front brake at the same time so it's something that you will get used to there's a definitely a technique to riding it it's not just uh, like a modern sports bike where you can just jump on it and rely on ABS, traction control, all the other safety features. This has got no, none of that. You know, it's a carburetted engine, doesn't have ABS. It's just a single brake on the front, a single disc on the back as well. Um, and it's a shaft driven bike as well. So that sort of takes takes a bit of, bit of the power away when you're expecting it. But, you know, it's a torque monster it's so talky it's unreal and i would happily have this as a second bike if i had anywhere to keep it which unfortunately i don't but yeah it's so far i'm really enjoying the bike and a big thank you to felipe for lending me the bike so let's just carry on this road for a bit and uh, i'll give you a, a sound clip and show you show you how it sounds can i show you how it sounds anyway on with the raw audio <laughs> Come in there. <laughs> Crazy Brazilians. <laughs> all right guys <laughs> so that was a random a random meeting with some crazy brazilianos oh yeah hell yeah so let's get some pictures of the bike here and that'll be it for today so thank you for watching my video guys as always make sure you smash the fuck out of that like button and if you haven't done already please consider subscribing to my channel and i'll see you in the next video goodbye for now